let's uh, start uh, making a block again and then we'll move forward with dynamic blocks and all. So uh, in order to uh, make this element as a block, the first thing I'm going to do is whether this block should stay in a particular uh, layer or not, I have to decide. Okay, and then you can go for block here in this block palette in the template, or you can go to insert and just go for create blocks. Okay, there are two options to select either there or here. I'll just go for create block, then I have to name my block. So I'll just name my block as element. Then the next thing you have to do is you have to pick a point from which uh, like this point acts as your reference point. So we know AutoCAD is function will, will function as a kind of X, Y, Z chord, X, Y, Z coordinate system. So which is the point which holds this whole block? We have to decide and let's say we are going to give this point as our reference. Then you have to select the whole object, whatever object we are going to form a block. Just select the object with this option. Then hit enter. This is must. You have to hit enter. So we have selected the base point, selected the whole object, and we have given name. The next thing is, as we have discussed yesterday, we have three options over here. If I click retain, this block will be staying here after conversion without. Uh, like say grouping together. If I say convert to block, what happens is this block will be converted to a block, this element, and also it will stay in this place. The third option is still it is, it will be converted as a block, but it will be gone from this place. So let's say uh, we have to uh, put it in convert to block. I will uh, turn off this option over here. Let's see what uh, uh, like uh, what this option is later. Let me just turn off this. OK, now you can see this whole object is grouped together and you can see there is a point. OK, this is a this is called a script. So this grip is placed at this point. So if I want to move this block. I have to press this script and this block will automatically move. I don't have to select any uh, command over here to move. Just select the block and you will have a grip. So this will be your uh, point of contact for this block. Either you want to copy or move. Let's say I want to copy. Even if I want to copy also, it will it will be my uh, say uh, reference point. You can copy from which direction, any direction. But if you are uh, using in this direction, you can see it's already highlighted. So it will help me to copy also. So uh, that will be the point of contact for this block. OK, we have drawn the block. How do we import that a particular block in our uh, uh, like uh, working in environment, you have to go for I enter. So insert is your template. So insert is your go to for selecting whatever block you have in your project. So here is our element. This is what we've created uh, until now. So if I want to uh, use this block in my project, just click on this block. It will be always. Uh, it will be present. You can drag it anywhere. Just drop. It. So this block, for some reason, if I want to edit this block, what should I do? I just right click on this block, and you have to go for block editor. The same block editor which we have turned off in the beginning. Okay. Now let's say I just wanted to add one more circle here. C enter. You can add the circle. After after making your changes, whatever changes you want to impart in your block, just close block editor. Then it lasts for a uh, disclaimer whether you want to save the change or not. Save the change to element. So you can see. So you, this block will be changed, and wherever this block is there, the changes will be on the block also. So what if I want to know where this block is saved? Then you have to go for say I click so 
so i can see element so it's not fine in the place So you have to go for a command called write block. Okay. So uh, up until now, what we have seen is we have created a block, and we know the block is going to enter in our project. So uh, what if I want to save this particular uh, block in a given location so that I can access this block whenever I require? For that, you have to select the block and you have to uh, type this command w block. W block is nothing but write block, which means you are uh, writing this block or you are uh, saving this block in a given location. So this is our block. Our block's name is element. Now you can see the path from where uh, or where you have to save this path. You can select anywhere. Let's see. Uh, I am selecting my desktop. Just uh, give the file name. Save it. Okay. You can see this element is my block. Now let's say I just wanted to load that block in another file. So let's say, uh, let me just try to open another file. Let me close this. So this is new file, or let's close everything. Let's start with new file. So this is new file. I don't have anything. First, let let's change units. Units to architecture, so this is okay. Inches. Now I want to load that file. Okay, you can do many things, but the easiest thing is either you want to, if you want to load that file, just minimize the CAD like this. See, like this. You can directly drop it, drag and drop. You have that. X scale factor, Y scale factor. Uh, we have seen this yesterday, right? You have to give the angle also. So it will be in your project. There is another way also. You have to just go to insert. Okay. In the insert, you can. there is a, a option called insert. You can go for blocks from libraries. This is your desktop. And here you have your block. Okay. Either you can drag and drop or you can directly drag uh, from here, or you can just go to insert block from library, and you can just uh, give your location or path where your block is. Clear? So this is what a normal block is. Yesterday we were uh, discussing something called dynamic block. So a dynamic block is something which has multiple settings in it that you have to draw it only once, and that block can be utilized for many purposes. Let's see. I just give. I'll just give a small example, okay? Because this is a bit of a complicated topic. So let's uh, let me keep it as simple as possible. I'll just go to home. So uh, I'll just try to draw a. So let me check units. Uh, let's draw in millimeters, so it will be very easy for us. One. So decimal millimeters. Okay. Now let let me just draw a simple like a uh, object. In order to understand what these dynamic blocks are, I'll just try to draw a rectangle of hundred, hundred. Okay, keep it as close to this region as possible, so that it looks good. Now this is what a rectangle is. Imagine this as our uh, uh, dining table, okay? And I want one seat over here, one seat over here for this dimension. As I increase this dimension to this length to 200, I should have four seats. One, two, three, four. As I increase to, let's say, uh, 200, 200, 300, I should have three, three, six seats. So 
what i'm trying to do is i'll uh, just uh, do that one also let's see um, i'll just try to draw the reference line in this direction and let's say you have to draw a circle like this try to imagine this as a uh, chair okay i'll just try to mirror this point this point no then i'll uh, remove my reference line so try to imagine this as a dining table and two chairs okay now the requirement is for 100 mm we need two chairs but if the size is going to increase depending on the room size it will become 200 mm so if it becomes 200 mm i need to have four chairs four chairs and then if it becomes like say 300 mm i need to have six chairs depending on the size of the room i need to increase or decrease the same table okay that is possible earlier like here in this block what happens this will be big because we have changed the dimension there is no option to change the size okay you can extend it by stretching it like you can take the stretch command give a point you can increase or decrease its size uh, like size but that's not the point what i'm trying to do is without giving any command for a given block with just simple inputs let's say like uh, if i uh, select on this particular region you have four grips right this type of grips i may have and by simply by simply clicking on that any grip i have to change its uh, dimension and shape depending on my uh, uh, requirement so that's what uh, my challenge is that is what a dynamic black can do first let us draw this i mean first let us convert this as a block okay i can go to create a block over here let me say um, this block will be saved as uh, and table i'll just pick point anywhere here then i'll just select the object so this will be my whole object then immediately i'll go for open in block editor if i turn on this option we will be in the block editor environment okay so this is what our environment is i'll just close this one so you can see a uh, much clearer way so we are in the block environment here we can edit or modify or give any commands to the block so that it will be a dynamic block there are many constraints there are many uh, options animations you can give many things to a blocks but uh, like uh, you have to increase slowly one by one if you uh, go it fast in this uh, particular area it will be very confusing for us so let me just uh, as we have started this let me rephrase it so what we are trying to do is i have to extend this block in such a way that it is going to multiply or uh, uh, extend as per my requirement first let me go to parameters over here and here let me take linear parameter so i'll just give my dimension i am starting from this point i'm going to this point and i'll give third click somewhere so that the distance is visible so here i have an exclamation mark the exclamation marks indicate that so it it, it is a parameter and it doesn't have any action action in the sense it has to move or it has to change like if i go to action panel you can see these are the multiple things you can do with action first let me take the stretch command okay so i want to stretch this this particular distance parameter okay and then i'll give this point to my stretch stretching point okay i'll i'll press enter then so then i'll press the area or uh, the place from where it has to stretch and then i have given the area now i have to give that uh, the in the object itself which part has to stretch so let me select this part okay let's see what happens after that i'll just press enter okay now let me go to test block so whatever the change we have done right we can test it in the test block environment click on this particular uh, block if you can see here you can see i am able to edit this even direction this side 
it is not extending this side i am trying to give my input and it is stretching unlimitedly okay this is the first step so now i'll go just go go back to my uh, block editor we've got our first point the second point what we have to do is how much it should stretch okay that we have to uh, change let me go to properties bar pr enter so we'll click on this particular uh, distance parameter if you scroll down okay we have something called value set over here in this value set the distance type is none that is why it is uh, extending unlimited let me change this distance type to list okay the list is the dimension which we have given 100 over here let me add something to the list okay so as you discussed for every 100 meters like uh, sorry 100 mm we have to add two more chairs i'll just give uh, the parameter like uh, say 200 300 400 we have given four parameters and then again let me check test block now this time if i if i try to uh, click on this block try to drag like this you can see only one thing is displayed two three four so until four it's being displayed after that even if i drag it's not displayed because that is a maximum amount which we have given one two three four again let me just uh, try to close the block. So we have extended this thing. We have extended until four units, which means uh, we are going to have eight chairs. For chairs, we have done nothing, right? We have to go to array. Okay. Then select this parameter. Upon this parameter, we have to multiply these two things. Only those two things, right? So as the distance increases, we have to multiply only these two things. So I'm selecting only these two things. Press enter. Then it lasts for a distance column. So uh, like uh, we have, they have to multiply. So here something is there. Exactly for 100 mm, it has to multiply. I'll give the distance of 100 mm. Okay, that's done. Now let me close the block editor and let's see whether save the changes. Let's see whether our block has imparted the changes or not. Let's see we have two, two uh, chairs. Let's see what happens if we multiply like this, multiply like this. So uh, there is an error for here. Let's just go to a uh, block editor again. Right click. Go to block editor. So Let me give the uh, what you call stretch. Oh, sorry, uh, this array again. Okay, for that, I'll just select the dimension which I have to multiply. Then later, enter. We have to select the objects that. It has to array. Select enter. Enter. Sorry. I've selected array. I've given the distance. Enter. Then I have to select the objects. Just one second. Let me move this. So we have our uh, distant type. So I think uh, we have lost this. Let me uh, read what this is. Okay. This is what I was saying. You have to be very careful of what you're doing. So let me uh, redraw again. Let's uh, first first thing we have to give is go to parameters, go to linear. So I have given distance, and you have to click somewhere else, and then this distance has to be a parameter. For that. I'm giving stretch. So the stretch will be in X direction. So this is the point of stretch. Clear? Then what happens is after that, let's say whether we have uh, 
imparted this change or not in the test block. Click on this block, it is not imparted. That's why it's not changing. That is the use of this test block. You have to click the dimension which uh, you are you want to change or you want to give a function. Just go to actions again, go to stretch. So this is what I want to give, and this is where I want to start. Enter. And then you have to select which is the place you want to move. And then you have to give the area which it has to move. Press enter. Now let's go to test block and see whether we have given the exact thing or not. We have done this. So this part is clear. Go to test block again. So we have given the distance. Now select the distance. And what you have to do, you have to go for list and the list should be three or four dimensions for our test case 200 300 okay i'll go with three again let's go to test block let's see whether we have imparted the change or not something like this 200 300 okay this is fine up until now we've got our extension clear and we cannot extend beyond that. Even we extend, there is nothing happening. Close the block again. Again, now I have to give these particular chairs a movement. For that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to array. Okay, so depending on this parameter only, they have to make an array. Press enter. Then you have to select the objects which uh, you have to array. Press enter. Then you have to give the dimension which it has to multiply. Press enter. Close the block editor. See, you can see. Right? So, this is what uh, a dynamic block is. So, I have created only one block. Okay, let me just give an example. Right? I try to move the block. Somewhere out, out here. So, this is what a room is. So, okay, this is what a room is. Okay, for this room, this uh, table is enough. But suppose I have a bigger room size, something like this. In this room, this table size is not sufficient. So I want to increase the table size. Earlier, what we have to do is we have to edit this block again. We have to increase, say, uh, give a line like this, like this, like this. Again, we have to cut these things. We have to copy these things. So now with dynamic blocks, you can just with a simple click, you can extend. If you want to extend this thing, Next time. Okay, it, it makes our job easier. We can uh, add anything like color, texture, or uh, certain animations also. It's possible via this dynamic block, but it, it takes a lot of, uh, say, practice and uh, options to be used over here. Uh, I'll just try to block it. You can see we can give constraints also, which means Say if you are increasing something in X direction of 100 mm, you can increase automatically increase Y direction of 100 mm or 200 mm. Okay, depending on your requirement, you can change. Like there is a rectangle, and uh, rectangle is normally uh, one side is bigger than other side. So if you are saying like say 200 by 100, if 200 is increased by 300, automatically 100 should be increased to 150. So you can put such such, uh, such conditions also. And there is something called, uh, uh, so what we call as lockups, lookups. Lookups, uh, anyone heard of lookups before? It is in Excel. Anyone? Anyone used uh, Excel before? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Part, I didn't get that. 
this array parts huh? oh, yeah. so what what have done is what have done is uh, so we have selected something to stretch okay after that we are stretching this particular part in this direction we are not stretching we cannot stretch this right we have to multiply this so for multiplication what i have done is i have selected something called array over here so for array again what should be the base for stretching an array this distance this uh, imagine this as a function parameter you have selected this distance as a parameter so our array should be based on this distance not this distance okay this is a functional parameter this parameter of is of 100 mm okay this uh, center of this parameter is our object now i have given a condition so what uh, what is the basis of our array so normally uh, let's say uh, i'll just go back outside so if i am trying to use an array command over here let's see i'm trying to use an array command over here rectangular array so you have to give certain conditions like columns rows and also distance between the columns all right sir so you have to give the distance between the columns and distance between the rows also over here here the same thing what we are doing is i click let's go to block editor what we are doing is so this array what is the distance from each uh, element to other element that distance we are giving the base as this distance this may be any uh, constraint but this constraint is ma marked in parameter these are called parameters and one of the parameter is linear parameter which is it extends in one direction okay and that direction is straight line x or y direction okay i am mapping this array to a parameter called distance and the distance i am going to give is 100 mm so so let's say for this particular parameter our array is staying straight in the middle it will take like that after that no i have given 100 as my distance so from this point it has to travel to 100 and it has four breaks right four uh, like uh, we have given for this distance what we have given is list of three stops so this has to have three arrays same as in our array command which we have to give number of uh, times it has to multiply that input will be given from this value so right you you are you are able to follow right sir can you follow sir yes sir so yeah yeah first thing is it has to have a path that path is we are giving with our distance uh, parameter next thing is it has to multiply how many times it has to multiply that is provided by our list over here and what is the distance the distance we have given 100 every 100 it will multiply three times whatever the object we are selecting in the array it will multiply three times okay sir thank you i hope uh, yeah i hope i have answered okay so it's it's a bit of tricky as i've said uh, as you practice uh, what you call uh, easier sir so this is called dynamic blocks so it is one of uh, trickiest part in autocad earlier it it was not there again as i've said uh, there are multiple tools which are added in the recent versions this is one of uh, tool because autocad wants to catch up with other softwares the other softwares uh, which are in the market currently they are providing many tools like this so autocad wanted to catch up and they are uh, uh, making such tools so the next part is like uh, okay we have created certain blocks what if uh, the block is difficult or we don't want to create the, the block and uh, say we don't have the block in other files also there is an option called design center design center is your default uh, go to location for searching the blocks in autocad i'll just go for ad add center this is a shortcut for design center let's see what happens if i go to design center so this is what our design center is you can see as soon as i go to design center this is uh, our path path or uh, browser let's say browser of files so the design center is our uh, sample active uh, database enus 
this is a design center location let me uh, increase its size you can see as soon as i go to design center it has certain inbuilt blocks by default present in autocad let's say uh, we are going to do certain electronics drawings okay as soon as i hit the blocks you can see there are certain uh, pre default uh, blocks that are present in autocad if you want to use any of block just click on that part, block double click it will be inserted in your project here it is wherever you place your block will be there okay so so let's see how many blocks are there by default in design center you can see i have seen uh, the text there are no text so electronics we have seen so uh, we can see integrated circuits there are certain blocks for electrical power there are certain blocks for fastness there are certain blocks let's see um, these are the blocks if i want to place um, this helical or hex net just try to place it over here it will be present in our project by default like that any anything that is present by default in your autocad you can access it via add center okay there are like uh, many useful uh, blocks will be present by default uh, i want to have uh, certain plantations let's say i want to have a tree i'll just go for landscaping and uh, there are certain trees over here if i want this particular tree just right click or drag it drop the tree will be there in our project these are views for elevation these are uh, views for plan views just you have to uh, remember which is the view or what is the view you are drawing and what is the block you are selecting and also we have uh, plant processing like uh, blocks for plant for processing buildings so these are our regular blocks okay let's see uh, uh, if at all any dynamic blocks that we have discussed until now if at all any dynamic block is there in our project so let's minimize this and you can see there is something called dynamic block over here in the dynamic block let's straight away go to mechanical mechanical metric let's see uh, let's select something like hexnet again try to drag and drop over here let's see what why this is called as a dynamic block okay, this is a block as soon as i click on this block we have the uh, name and uh, type of this block so it is a m10 size block if i want to decrease the size of this particular block just click on this node or point you can see the block is same it can be decreased or increased depending on our requirement you can see i have selected the same block what whatever the size uh, requirement is there at that particular design i can change according to that design this is the advantage of uh, dynamic block now let me go to this block editor and see how they have done it you can see they have drawn something and they have given some dimensions and they have named the dimensions you can see something like this this is called as constraints they have locked the constraints and they have made this to increase or decrease the size according to our selection this is what a dynamic block is it looks like so for in order to make uh, to uh, blocks like this you have to use this constraints over here the dimensional constraints over here and also the actions over here okay and also look up if if in case you are having multiple sizes you can have a value called lookup which with these functionalities you can uh, create something like this which is called dynamic block the advantage is you have to create only once it can be used for multiple projects also it reduces our drafting time because we are uh, putting our effect only once most of the companies like uh, big companies uh, manufacturers use this type of blocks in order to save their time because there will be a separate team of uh, engineers or draftsmen Who will be whose only job will be to do these type of uh, blocks? They'll hire these people. And nowadays, if we are purchasing some, uh, say, planetary uh, uh, equipment and all, the architectural team will directly get the inputs from the manufacturer with the dynamic blocks. Let's say uh, if uh, Hindware is a company and they are manufacturing bathtubs, they will provide the uh, dynamic blocks. 
to the architectural companies so okay, here here we are with the samples of the material they also provide this uh, autocad blocks so that they will use their blocks in their projects that is a uh, like advantage of having a dedicated team to our uh, making this blocks okay let's say we don't have uh, our block over here and also we don't uh, like to make or uh, we'll just uh, checking for option to download the block from somewhere so is it possible to download the block yes it is possible there are plenty of websites which which are only meant for blocks itself so let's see some websites so here you, if you uh, just type blocks for autocad you will get many websites so this is cadblocks.net is one of website let us see uh, what are the blocks they are having first you have to go for collection category and uh, uh, let's say i'm i'm looking for a uh, furniture and uh, this is a uh, furniture uh, beds catalog this is sofa catalog again this is for floor plan this is for elevation plan you have to make sure what your uh, this is for tables for floor plan let me select this thing let me download here download cat blocks and let me give a location for that so it's downloaded we extract it so this is what the file is you can see there are multiple blocks here by default so these are not dynamic blocks these are just normal blocks so uh, it it saves a lot of time uh, for me in order to like uh, i don't have to draft anything so as we discussed this uh, symbol indicates it's a glass like that for these blocks are only for representation purpose so you don't have to make make it as dynamic let's say i want this block all i can do is just control c so it's it's big because uh, the units are different so let's let me paste over here you can see the sizes so what what we use so this is a use of uh, our uh, this is where you can download mini blocks so if you just uh, have time try to scroll uh, through this uh, website you can see multiple blocks and multiple uh, samples also which you can use directly straight away by downloading so there is no restriction for a size over here because we are not uh, downloading everything in our project whatever we need from this block we'll just try to copy let's say control c and we'll paste it in our project again if you want to uh, use this particular block what what we can do is just go for w block okay then this is a block which we have selected so and then you can give a location particular location only for this block so if you want to use a bunch of blocks in a given project you don't have to save and go for w block what you have to do is you just go for save as and uh, give a location like a uh, uh, given name as furniture and all the blocks related to furniture you can save in this particular file so whenever you are in need of furniture in any drawing you can just try to drag and drop those things clear doubts in this anyone okay those are the like most important uh, concept there are three most important concepts in autocad we have covered everything we are like the draw commands modify commands and the blocks everything should be placed in layers so all the important tabs that are present in our first uh, like ribbon we have covered only for group this uh, we mostly not use this thing group is nothing but i'll just try to explain so uh, we have a rectangle we have a circle okay we don't want to block these things because like say these are big elements this there is no use of block and this is not repeated what we can do is we can just group them together So that this will stay together. That's it. There is no like uh, no bigger functionality. We have uh, let's say here they have done it. So we have a group of furniture like this. 
and I don't want to block all these things. Okay, what I can do is select everything. I can just group it. So whenever I want to use this, or you, uh, I want to, uh, I don't want to move this particular elements. I can group them. So if I just copy, paste, everything will be together at once. Instead of selecting individual thing, I can select. So once it is out of the project, you have to remember it will be ungrouped. So you have to always remember. But then again, in this particular project, it will be grouped. If you are moving a group out of the project, it will move. So what is the advantage of group is when you try to group something, uh, it will not move. So whenever you want to, you want to be cautious that certain parts of a drawing should not move, then we will group. So how do we ungroup it? Just try to ungroup it. So it will be ungrouped. So that's uh, uh, use of grouping. Whenever you have to select or you want to group something, select that, group it. You can group it together. So I just uh, wanted to one important topic I just wanted to tell. Uh, let me create three layers. Layer one. I'll give a color of say green. And layer two. Let's say I'll give color of red. And layer three. And color of yellow. Okay. So we have got three layers. First, let me draw a rectangle in zero layer. Just copy it, paste it four times. Okay. Now let me select this thing. I want to push this to one layer. I want to push this element to second layer. I want to push this element to third layer. And imagine everything is on. Like, uh, how do you imagine layer is uh, paper stacked one on together, but the papers are transparent. Which which means that whatever we draw, they'll be visible. But for now, what I'm going to do is, I'm trying to move everything and try to stack one on one on another. Let's see what is visible on top of it. Something like this. And at last, what I'm going to do is. I'm going to change it. Now, I am in zero layer, right? But I want to select the object which I have drawn in zero layer. I don't know what are the elements that are present beneath this yellow thing. Because everything, I, if I select something, only topmost object is being selected. Uh, what is beneath that, I cannot see. Sometimes this happens. So in order to see what is, uh, like how many layers are there in a given selection or in a place? You have to go for crafting settings. So we have uh, just, I hope everyone remembers, we have to always turn on this object snap, snap and grids always. That we know. But if you uh, scroll down here, there is something called selection cycling. Okay. You have to turn on allow selection cycling. OK, hit OK. After that, if you go here, you can see there is a, a small uh, symbol that indicates square over a square. Click on that. If you click on that, now you can see no matter how many elements are placed on top of each other, you can see all the elements together here in the selection cycle. Like say, for example, if I want to select the white uh, rectangle, click on that white rectangle, only white rectangle will be deleted. Again, if I want to select the red one, go here. It will be highlighted, which means there are more than one element in the given area or in the given place. Even if it is line, even if it is circle, it doesn't matter. If something is cro uh, cross-sectioning something, it will show over here in the selection cycle. And let's say I want to delete something of red color. Select that. Boom. It will be gone. Until last thing, you can select, you can delete anything. For that, what you have to do is go for DS. Enter. The last thing is selection cycling. You have to switch on that selection cycling. So that indicates our selection. Whatever we are like uh, 
let's say I'm drawing something in uh, uh, level two. I'll just try to draw a line. If I go on this particular intersection, intersection only, you can see in this given intersection, there are two things of two layers are passing. If you want to select red, select red. If you want to select y, uh, yellow, you can select. So this is especially using uh, useful uh, when you mistakenly drawn something like this layer over layer. And you don't know, and uh, someone might have drawn something on layer over layer. You don't know what is done. This is a small file, so you can see if uh, some file is very big and you cannot locate what is done or what is beneath line, another line. You have to go for this selection line. Or you can also do, uh, uh, there is a command called overkill. Okay, what this does is, whatever that is not used in the project, it will just try to turn off its usage. That command is overkill. So what overkill command does is, so for example, there are eight to 10 layers, okay? And you are working only in two layers, one and two. For long period of time, layer one is not used, okay? Then if you use this overkill command, that uh, layer, you have to select the options, press enter, hit okay. That layer one, whatever your objects you are uh, uh, used in layer one, they will temporarily freeze. They will be in your project. So we have discussed this freeze, right? They will temporarily freeze. They will uh, like, uh, there is no amount of RAM will be allocated for that layers. There is one more option called purge, which, which is also similar to our uh, overkill. This purge, what happens is, if you select any item, so if you hit purge all, let's say I want to purge everything in the blocks. So there is no uh, item to refresh over here. Okay, that is why it is not showing. So let's say if you want to uh, purge everything in this item, it will be purged, which means this is also similar to overkill. What happens over here is if you click this purge option, it will uh, instantly free your RAM space in your system. By, uh, there is uh, not RAM, ROM, ROM space. So that is a ROM is temporary memory. So when you hit purge, wherever your temporary locations are there or wherever your uh, layers or blocks, let's say uh, we have not used this block in this project, in this setting. So this will be purged automatically. Now purge is nothing but if it is not used, the ROM allocation will be reduced, that's it. What happens when you use purges, it will again increase your performance of your PC. So again, th this comes down to performance of PC. I'm stressing this word very much because as you, uh, Try to increase your uh, work load in AutoCAD, it will definitely slow down. So these are certain options with which you can in, in improve your performance of your PC. Okay. Uh, let's just cover one more topic. That is text. If you want to give text for any uh, drawing here, let's say uh, I want to note down this as a furniture. How do you text? There are two options to text. Let's see what those options are. I'll just go for single line text, draw something like this. Okay. Um, say furniture. Enter. Table. Okay. This is single line text. This. I just go for multi-line text. I'll just give something like this. I just type same matter. So in single line text, what happens is every line is a different entity. I've I've typed these two things together. But in single line, every line is independent of itself. But in multi line, every line is dependent. So whatever we type in multi line, it stays together. 
that is a major difference so whatever you are typing trying to type if it is a single line if it is a, like a, a a small thing you have to go for single line and it is uh, it doesn't have that much of editing functions so normally it is suggested or it is advisable to use multi line text even if you are using a single line of text like this is a furniture and you are uh, trying to draw this as a furniture now what are the other settings are there just try to write, double click this text whatever the text you are using as soon as i go to uh, double click you can see the settings are there so again uh, in the text also there are three different standards for each standard you have different types of uh, the fonts whatever the font that is standard or the font you feel that should be there in that project you can select so these are many pro many uh, fonts as soon as you select any font as soon as you select any font it will be converted to that font and also the size if you want to increase or decrease the size you can see it is 4000 let's let's make it to 500 so so here you can see justification okay and uh, the type of font it is every every related setting to that font you can see it's let me double click you can see what is the layer of that given font and uh, what is the line type we like uh, every line font can also be placed in a, any layer and it sizes everything can also be changed just take a double click over here again you, you can see if you want to justify or if you want to change the layer of the font just simple as like a word whatever the settings we can see in word we can see over here okay that is the main difference between our uh, single line text and multi line text and what are the other things that are there in our annotations so if you want to place for some reason a table in your autocad drawing we can also place the table in this table selection select the table and then it will ask for type of table you want. If you want some more tables that is not standard, go to modify and then uh, you can just give your data like uh, uh, what is your table direction, what is your color, what is your alignment, and also the margin sizes also. You can go to text and you can give the type of text you want your table to be. And the borders, what is the line weight of your border, line type, line color, Everything that is related to the table, you can give the input over here, and then you have to set current, close it. So here, then it asks for ins insertion point where wherever you click, your table will fall, follow. So you have your five like number of columns, and each column's width, number of rows, the row height. After selecting every setting, you have to just hit OK. So wherever you hit OK, press Enter. You see your column. If you want to increase the size or decrease the size, depending on your uh, table size, you can again just go for double click. Again, you can give your uh, inputs. So, all right, that is what a table is. If you want to give extra information or if you want to extract the table's information to a Excel sheet. You can just go for extract data. Whatever the drawing is uh, having information, let's say I'll just save it over here. So whatever the information is uh, in this drawing will be extracted so that uh, it can be used for many other purposes. Like uh, some people, they use this uh, drawings information to write a code. As we have seen, uh, we have uh, seen some dynamic uh, blocks, right? There are uh, certain options or certain softwares with which you can actually customize the whole AutoCAD. Like say uh, you are drawing uh, designing lift. So this, this is a, one of the projects which my previous company has done. So they are uh, they have uh, been contacted by a lift company. So what happens is for that lift company, there are certain fixed parameters like 
uh, the number of people you uh, that will enter in the lift is 2 to say 30 okay the number of floors will be 2 to say 20 that is the maximum they can produce and say uh, the maximum load is some 2000 cases so they'll combine all these inputs and they'll form the uh, drawings as per those inputs okay so if you uh, uh, make maximum permutations and combinations also the maximum possible drawings is like say 20 to 30 okay now what you can do is with that data you can form a plugin for that plugin this data will be used so if you are forming a plugin for the data what happens is there'll be a, a column like this you have to just try to give your input how many people are going to enter and uh, what is the floor height and how many floors are there and then uh, what is the maximum load capacity you have to just give the input hit enter you have your cad drawing by default for that okay that is called automation so you can see uh, in the uh, express tools there are properties for that also you can see um, commands over here so these settings are used for those so whatever uh, the plugin we create will be in the add-ins there is no add-in currently over here because we don't have any plugins but with these tools and uh, something called c sharp you can actually program and uh, uh, present your inputs to uh, extracted dwg file okay uh, i think uh, that's it uh, for today's topic uh, i'll just close the session and uh, let's have a q a on if you have any doubts let's clear